The next chapter in your syllabus is ecology, so we will learn about the science behind the term ecology. So first, what is ecology? So ecology is the study of anything that is related to the ecosystem. Ecosystem is about the interaction either between the biotic and the biotic component or between the biotic and the abiotic component of the ecosystem. So ecology is the study of the interaction between organisms and their natural environment. Organisms, as I mentioned earlier, is the biotic component and the natural environment is the abiotic component of the ecosystem. Next, the terminologies related to ecology study. First is niche, second is habitat, third is organism, fourth is population, and then we have community, followed by ecosystem, biome, and finally the biosphere. So kita akan tengok setiap term yang related to the ecology. Niche. So what is niche? So niche is basically the ecological status or role of an organism in its environment with respect to their habitat, interaction with other organisms as well as resources they use to get energy or to get nutrient and as well as for survival. For example, kat sini kita nampak ada dua different organisms, ada bacteria dan juga ada fungi. So in terms of niche, bacteria dan fungi both have a specific role in the environment iaitu sebagai decomposer. Jadi kita nampak dua organisme ini ada specific niche dia iaitu bertindak sebagai decomposer to break down dead organic matter and then to recycle the nutrients from the dead organic matter. Another example is macam rumput ni. So plants have a specific role in the ecosystem iaitu to act as a producer sebab plant boleh buat photosynthesis So mereka yang akan tukarkan light energy into organic matter. Next, we will have other organisms that can eat the producer which will act as a consumer in the ecosystem. So in this example, lembu ni adalah sebagai primary consumer sebab dia adalah organism yang pertama yang akan makan producer. Two species cannot coexist in a community if their niches are identical. So maksudnya kalau ada dua species yang berbeza, diorang tak boleh share diorang punya niche. They cannot have the same specific ecological role within the same ecosystem. Kenapa? The reason for this is when the two species share the same niche in the same community or ecosystem, there will be interspecific competition. Akan ada competition between the two species that share the same niche. And when there is competition, only one will try, the other will lose. So, if two species want to survive in the same ecosystem, so they must separate their niche. For example, dalam gambar ni kita nampak, at first ada satu jenis species of birds that feed on bugs located at this particular tree. If there is another species of birds yang datang dan makan the same kind of bugs on the same tree, this will lead to competition. And if there is competition, only one will try, the other will lose. Unless the two species of organisms starts to separate their niche. Kat sini kita nampak Tadi yang birds color kuning ni, species color kuning ni makan dekat the whole parts of the tree. Tapi bila ada competition dengan birds yang species color merah, the two species will separate their niche. Sekarang yang color kuning tu akan fokus dekat kawasan daun, tapi yang color merah tu pula akan fokus dekat kawasan batang pokok. So in this case, we can see that the separation of niche will allow the two species to coexist. Next is habitat. So habitat is the area, kawasan, where the organism lives, get their food, shelter, and reproduce. 
There are two types of habitat. First is macro habitat, which is the large scale area with many different organisms. And then we have micro habitat, which is a small area found in a larger habitat. And this micro habitat has a different characteristic compared to the rest of the larger habitat. An example of micro habitat is ocean or a forest, a grassland or a desert. For micro habitat, if we look closely on this dead tree, we can see a smaller micro habitat that is different from the rest of the forest which is the larger habitat. So dekat pokok ni kita nampak permukaan dia lembab. So bila dia lembab, dia sesuai untuk jadi habitat kepada a different groups of organism iaitu dalam gambar ni yang ditunjukkan adalah menjadi habitat untuk bryophytes ataupun polytrichum. So kita boleh nampak micro habitat tu sebenarnya sebahagian daripada the larger macro habitat. And then micro habitat ada limited number of organism yang akan survive dekat situ. Kalau dekat macro habitat akan ada multiple different organisms. Next organism, organism can either be a unicellular or multicellular that are capable of reproducing growing as well as maintenance. So kasi kita nampak unicellular tu boleh jadi prokaryotic bacteria ataupun unicellular eukaryotes that belongs to the group protista. And then kalau mati selular tu seperti kingdom plantae ataupun kingdom animalia. Next, population. So population is a group of individuals of the same species that live together in the same place and can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So untuk kita consider a group of organism tu sebagai population, dia mesti belong to the same species dan mesti hidup dekat tempat yang sama dan antara organism tersebut diorang boleh interbreed. For example, in this grassland habitat, satu sahaja individu, so that individu is considered as an organism. So untuk jadi population, kena ada multiple individu of the same species When these individuals are able to interbreed with each other and then produce a fertile offspring, only then we consider this group of individuals belongs to a population. Next, a community. So it's a multiple populations of different species living together and interact with each other. For example, Tadi kita ada a population of rabbit. So if this population of rabbit interact with another population of organisms of a different species, so itu yang kita panggil sebagai a community. Next, what is ecosystem? So ecosystem is the relationship between the biotic or the community with their abiotic environment in a particular area. So kalau community tadi kita cuma tengok interaksi antara biotik dengan biotik. So kalau ekosistem kita tengok interaksi antara biotik dengan dia punya abiotic environment dia. So we have a community. So when we investigate the interaction between this community with their environment, for example dengan Cahaya, producer which is the grass will need light for photosynthesis. Light is a biotic factor. Rumput pula adalah biotic factor. So interaksi antara biotic dengan abiotic itu sudah merujuk kepada ecosystem. The community also breathe in air for cellular respiration. So itu pun adalah example of interaction antara biotic dan juga abiotic factor. Another example is the interaction between the community and water. Iaitu community tu perlukan air untuk hidup. So every interaction yang kita investigate in the ecosystem akan ada involve both the biotic and abiotic component of the ecosystem. 
and both of these components will influence each other. There are two types of ecosystem yang kena belajar, lake as well as tropical rainforest. Another terminology is biome. So biome is the large or distinct ecosystem that occupy a particular geographical region and characterized by similar climate, soil, plants and animal. So kamu boleh anggap biome ni sebenarnya ecosystem yang besar. Besar tu as in it will occupy a particular geographical region. Here we have a few different types of biome. So all of this biome is characterized by the surrounding temperature and dryness. For example, kita nampak tundra ada dekat Arctic region. So a specific geographical region untuk tundra adalah Arctic region. So kalau Arctic region maksudnya kawasan tu temperature dia very low, sangat sejuk. Kalau tropical region pula ada tropical rainforest, ada grassland, ada desert. So each of this biome can be found on a specific geographical region that has a particular climate. So itu adalah biome. The last one is biosphere. Biosphere is the entire portion of the planet, for example earth that is inhabited by the organism. So setiap pelusuk bumi ni ada organism dia. So the entire earth is known as a biosphere. Biosphere has three main components. The first one is lithosphere, iaitu soil and rock. And then we have hydrosphere, which is the water. And then lastly, the atmosphere, which is the air. Next, we will discuss the life hierarchical order. This is the relationship between the different components of biosphere yang kita dah tengok definition dia tadi. So we start with the organisms iaitu unit yang paling simple in the hierarchical order and then different organisms will interact with another organisms of the same species to form a population. When a different population of organisms of a specific species interact with each other in the same habitat, so that is the community. After community, if we investigate the interaction between the community and its abiotic environment, so itu adalah ecosystem. Next, the major ecosystem is known as biome yang ada specific geographical area and then specific climate. Lastly, we have everything which is the biosphere. So, semua komponen tadi akan ada di dalam biosphere. So, that is the life hierarchical order.